I'm surprised even after one sip at how, how much of a journey that was. Hello and welcome to My Tiny Bottles, the project where I'm exploring my grandmother's legacy of miniature liquor bottles one tiny bottle at a time. I'm your host, Tammy Coxon, and I am back with Ms. Frankie Marshall. Hi, great to be back. <laughs> we are going to taste some Japanese whiskey. So the last time I had you on, it was to taste cognac um, because you are known as, you know, a cognac person, um, shall we say. But I didn't want to pin, pigeonhole you into just tasting cognac. So I kind of gave you the run of the rest of the list and you picked out uh, Suntory Royal. So why, why did that appeal? First of all, just so I'd be able to lure it over everybody else saying I got to taste the Suntory. <laughs> no, I, I thank you for not pigeonholing because a lot of people do, but I love whiskey. And like many people, I've developed an affinity for Japanese whiskey over the years. Um, when I ran a bar called the uh, Boudoir a few years ago, I stocked quite a few of them. And it was when people were still trying to, you know, a little bit figuring out, getting to know it. So um, I've been following along and I've actually had the, well, let's get to it. I have a little Suntory story. Oh, oh a Suntory yeah. story. Well, yeah. I am all in to hear your Suntory story. Do you want to tell it now or do you want to taste first? Let's taste first. Let's taste, taste first. It. Okay, so this is Suntory Royal, uh, released by the company initially in 1960 as like the, uh, an as a 60th anniversary of the founding of the company. Um, and this was for a time Suntory's highest whiskey. And then, of course, they come out with Yamazaki Single Malt for the first time in 1984. Mm. So this one, based on the tax strip, um, I can say is from between 1983 and 1985. So right around that same time. And it honestly is something that I was really shocked to find in my grandma's collection. My grandma lived in like southwestern Ontario, Canada. You know, I just had no idea that mm -hmm. because we think of Japanese whiskey as kind of a recent phenomenon, I had no idea they were making minis of it and importing it in the 80s. Yeah, neither had I. And I wish I'd known your grandma now, you know, <laughs> spend a little time with her. But yeah, that's why I'm really excited to taste this because I have no idea, you know, where this is going. Right. I mean, is it, is this when they had a lot more of their own stocks of Japanese whiskey? Of, uh, actually whiskey that was right i mean Japanese. if they were gearing up to do the single malt release yeah. then maybe they did mm -hmm. or maybe they were diverting it all there but this also was their top of the line so right kind of like yeah assume it's got some good juice in it and this right. is the green this is a green whiskey not a right. single malt so this is a blended a blended whiskey yes. yep exactly yep all right it's got a really good seal on it which is great because i've Heard varying reviews of these 1980s bottles, and it really depends how well they were sealed. This has great shoulder levels and just a beautiful little bottle. Yeah, and I love the cap as well. It looks a little bit, it, it evokes Japan. Right, kind of that pagoda like. Shape. Exactly. And also, you know, where you rest your chopsticks. Uh, right. When you, when you go out yeah. to sushi. <laughs> what, I can't remember what those things are called. Oh, cute. okay. So cute. So I have very little experience with Japanese whiskey. So you're probably going to be the guide here as to what are we looking for? Okay, what yeah. What are expecting to find? And also, I'm just, again, noticing the shape of this bottle. It has a look almost like a... Having just recently watched Shogun, <laughs> you know, with the... It looks like a, a, someone in a... In the uniform, you know what I mean? That, that oh, kind of sure. falls. A samurai. samurai. And a think, little bit of a samurai I uniform. I think that is one of the things they were going for with the shape of this bottle. Yeah, you can re it really has that look, especially if you kind of see it from behind. That's really, and are these, um, it's got the blossoms on so the label. The podcast listeners, um, we have two bottles in front of us right now. Um, we have the tiny bottle, the mini one from grandma, and then I have a bigger one that I got at the duty free. I don't think the Suntory Royal has been imported into the US since the 1990s, but I found this at the duty free in the 20 teens when I was just kind of learning about um, Japanese whiskey. And so I grabbed it because it was the first one I ever, I'd seen that was in a price point I was willing to pay yeah. <laughs> at the moment. Um, and so I brought this home and I've had it lingering ever since. And so it was a great opportunity to taste side by side. So yeah, this one, the uh, older, sorry, the newer one that I have, the full-size bottle has this beautiful flower design on the front. Yeah. And they have sort of modified that over the years, different ones, where the um, this classic small bottle has like an SR in the background. So I'm saying I get some peat, right? Heat. Which I guess yeah, I, a, a did little... you say heat or peat? No, I said... Uh... 
I'm getting a little bit of smoke. Is that what you said? Yeah, that's Pete it. with a P, right? Okay. Pete, Pete with a P, <laughs> which I guess surprised me a little bit because I kind of think about Japanese whiskey sometimes, especially older ones. I was like, oh, well, they were probably smooth and easy drinking and not as, you know, peated. But, but again, I know nothing. Well, again, I know, and I don't. I hate to make you grand generalizations, but I do think that there was a certain wish to emulate Scotch whiskey, that's right? It. Absolutely. So where it that's started. where you know we're getting that little bit of smoke here that I got right away as well. Yeah. I'm looking for a little bit more fruit. I'm getting like caramel, um, like I'm getting some of the toffee definitely. and I'm getting the smoke, but I'm not necessarily getting much in the way of fruit. I mean, there's a little bit of curd kind of. Like lemon curd? A little, like, I'm getting a little bit of like this orange, okay. a little orange marmalade. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely some lemon curd. A little bit of like honeysuckle, you know, there's that, that those honey notes, wow. it's clover honey. It's, <laughs> I love the specificity. Well, you, I mean, I love it about people who, who are experts, you know, right? Who well, taste for a living. And um, you yeah. Know. And there's just this tiny bit of this kind of falernum esque lime, those okay. lime notes in here as oh, well. That's deep. Um, as far as wood, I don't know. I mean, I, I know what I can assume that they were aged in, but let's, let's taste and see. I like it. Again, definitely peatier than I expected. Mm. It's kind of on the ashy end of the peat mm. spectrum for me. Yeah, um, I'm actually sorry. I'm just chewing on this because I'm surprised even after one sip at how how much of a journey that was. Like it's got a really persistent, yeah, a really a lot of persistence in the mouth. A really nice long finish. A little bit chewy. So one more. A lot more expressive on the palate than it was on the nose for me. Uh -huh. mm. Might just swallow that one. Um, Sometimes hard to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, the finish has a so again, there's this, this journey. The finish has a little bit of menthol on it, not in a bad way. Right. Um, <laughs> right, but again, that's part of its persistence, right? Yeah. It's got this kind of cooling mm. effect in your mouth. Yep. Yeah. Again, the, these trying to pinpoint those exact flavors. It's a little, a little leafy, just like a touch earth. There's quite a bit of earth to it as well. Yeah. Um, the fruit, again, I, I'm still getting those, like, it's got a really nice creaminess as well in the mouth. Yes. Um, but fruit definitely taking a backseat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's there, but it's not to the forefront at all. Yeah. It's a little bit mushroomy as well. Um, but again, it's not overly heavy. It's got like a nice medium to full body to it. I really, I really I'm, enjoy this. I'm yeah. enjoying this a lot. Uh -huh. um, so I have tasted this and used it a little, the big bottle, um, but I don't really remember it. And it's been open for a while. So I know some people think that that impacts whiskey and some people think it doesn't. But let's pour some comparison sample yeah. here. Yeah, I th I think it can definitely affect, but again, yeah. you know, I mean. Right. And it depends where they're stored, right? What the temperature's like. Totally different nose. Yeah. There's no peat at all. This one, I'm getting a lot more alcohol on the nose. I'm not yeah. getting as much, even though this was not as expressive on the nose, this one for me is less so. Hmm. A little like um, candied fruit. Yeah, I can see that. A little bit of like, yeah. The like candied orange. Again, I'm getting, I'm pulling a lot more. Yeah, just the alcohol. Pe it's got like pear, but pear skin. Pear. You know, oh, green yeah. pear skin. I love that you have a different sense memory for green pear skin versus like red pear skin. I, 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 they totally are. <laughs> I love that your catalog includes those. I always tell people when you want to learn to taste things mm. better, you know, and, and yeah. to smell things better, like you just have to build your library. Yeah. Right? I, you, I mean, purposefully smell raspberries and go, okay, that's what raspberries taste like and smell like, right? And, and I will say it is an exercise and it's, yeah. it's ongoing for me, you know, just uh, evaluating and being a better taster, being better at nosing and really trying to pull things out. Um, 
And that's why it's difficult, you know, when you're with someone else, it's tasting, they go, I get this, I get that. You're like, oh yeah, of course I do. Um, but it's also why I encourage people to taste yeah. together because we don't all have those same vocabularies. Exactly. And very often when somebody says a word, you're like, oh yeah, okay, now I can recognize that. Now I can see that. This opened up a little bit more in my glass. Also enjoyable. Ooh. Definitely less peat forward. It's there, which it wasn't at all on the nose. Mm -hmm. This one for me, it's a lot more like butterscotch and toffee mm -hmm. happening yep. here. Um, you know, baked apples. Um, trying to look for herb, herb, the herbaceous qualities. I just, maybe it's just because I've been cooking with it lately, but I'm getting a little bit of tarragon, like just a, a hint of that in there. Um, but definitely more mouth, mouth coating, a little bit more full bodied than our, yep. the, the older one. Now for here, I'm getting more of a sense of tannin here. And I'm thinking maybe there's some American oak could have been in involved the, in here. The full in the, size bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause I do get a little bit more of that. You know, I forgot to mention the obvious things. I'm getting the vanilla. I am getting some baking spice here um, more than. The persistence of the finish were on the um, first one I was getting like largely the peat for me was yeah. really persisting for a long time. This has much less of the peat, but I'm getting like, it's almost like a spiciness, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Like it feels very hot, yeah. but I would usually expect that just the alcohol heat would sort of dissipate where this is kind of holding on with this almost like rye level of spiciness on the finish. Interesting. For me. Yeah. That's yeah, I, the... can, I can see that a little bit. Yeah, I can see those. Those. Yeah, I can definitely get those peppery notes. And now that, yeah. uh, this is much more expressive on the nose, this one. So I'm, now I'm getting those, what you're saying about those, those spicy, almost mm, not quite dill. It, it's not quite there, but there's <laughs> right? a little bit of that, of those, uh, you know, those Scandinavian crackers that you get with the with the rye in them and those spices so yeah this one again very different but it's so, totally different totally very they different they were not trying to keep the royal style consistent yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. from time to time which kind of makes sense because they had the single malts where they were maybe catering to people who were looking for those bolder flavors and they were kind of making this as like an upscale blended yeah i will tell you that i did get to go to the distillery that's oh, nice. my story yeah. um, a few years ago i went i was in japan in 2018 and I was there by myself and I took my little suitcase. It's, you know, if you've been to the distillery, it's, it's a, well, not actually, I call it super jumbo. It's up to here, it's the size of seven year old my suitcase. But um, it, it was all, it's kind of in between Osaka and Kyoto or Kyoto and Osaka. Um, so it's fairly easy to get to. And I had an incredible visit. They had, yeah. I mean, it's a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. The tasting was beautiful. I sat outside and did a flight and uh, it was really, really, great experience being there. And when I got there, thanks to someone, I just took Manuel Savona, they gave me a little yellow, a little yellow pin. Uh -huh. And that meant VIP. I didn't know it at the oh. time. But so the, the people kept following me around going, do you need anything? I was like, why are you following me? Oh, but they were just trying to help. <laughs> that was a great, it was a really great experience. But I do think that, you know, with Japanese whiskey, there was, when people first started drinking it, I think when we first started getting acclimated to it, it was a little softer. Right. right. It was right. It, it definitely had. And I think that was part of the appeal. You know, it was just so easy. It was so in, incredibly well blended. Right. Most of them. And uh, and that's what you got. You got something that was very easy to drink, but still had depth and still had incredible flavors to it. And I think that this one falls or into that category. And then this one is falling into that, you know, more, again, appealing to that American whiskey drinker who wants something more bold and and intense and spicy. And if you look at the history of the company, when they when Suntory founded, they were trying to make um, sort of Scotch style whiskey very much, right? You know, the you know the distiller had fallen in love with Scotch whiskey, went there to learn about it, came back, and you know, best whiskey in the world. Let's make it and make it better, right? Um, and the first couple releases were rejected by the Japanese market because they were too peaty. Uh -huh. They weren't what they were looking for. So then they think backed off on the peat. And now as we have this sort of changing, uh, you know, spirits universe, right? Yeah. They probably continue to progress in that way. And, and that's what we're seeing by the 80s. They were bringing peat back into the equation, maybe. Bringing peat it back. <laughs> that's what they were doing. Um, 
Again, yeah, so, so very different. Again, more elegance here. Yeah. It's got this really beautiful length and journey. And now all the fruit's coming out. Well, this was a delightful deep dive. Oh, yeah. Two delicious bottles. I, I had high expectations, right? I was like, this is going to be perfectly delicious. I mean, most of the old whiskeys that I've tasted have been pretty good. That's delicious. And but this is this is delight. And it keeps expressing itself in different ways now for me. Mm. Now I'm getting a brininess. I'm getting a little bit of like pickling, pickling spice, but in a good way. I mean, I think this just keeps evolving. We could sit here and keep yeah. tasting these and we might. for the next 20 minutes, yeah. half an hour, hour, and we would probably continue to find different things in Yeah, them. for sure. But I will say, though, it's really interesting to me to see how Japanese whiskey has really exploded. Absolutely. Um, you know, but the prices now, I'm like, I still have a bottle of Yamazaki 18 at home. Yeah. I've got, a, you know, a few bottles from other brands that, and uh, it's just... Uh, it's been really incredible. And I just hope that they, regu they get the regulation sorted so that we okay. know that eventually we will be drinking, you know, whiskey from Japan uh, again. They still doing a lot of blending. I, that's for another, yeah, another time, another I'm sure. Rock, yeah. But, um, but yeah, nothing wrong with it. I mean, yeah, but right. as, just... as we talked about in our cognac episode, right? Yeah. Blending is an art. Exactly. Right. And buying somebody else's whiskey and blending them into your own style can, you know, be a craft too. Oh, so, it's a yeah. huge craft. I mean, I have yeah. tremendous respect for blenders. Yeah. It, having sat through a, quite a few blending exercises and come, come out with like really unbalanced <laughs> liquid, you know, I mean, it's, it's such a skill. It's such an art. I respect bl blenders. I mean, there's absolutely hundred percent nothing wrong with blends and I encourage everyone to drink them. Um, so yeah. Cheers Shall to blenders. We? To cheers the to the blenders yeah. and the Cheers distillers. to you. Thank you for having me. This is a great to experience. You. This has been fantastic. Where can people find you online? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I am on Instagram at drinking.violet. Follow along. And uh, yeah. Because you are much too big a personality to be a shrinking violet. Exactly. So Drinking somebody, got, somebody got it. I don't think anybody would get that reference, but yes, uh, it's got true. right out of the gate. Sometimes I do shrink though. <laughs> And I, of course, am Tammy Coxon, and you can find uh, me at MyTinyBottles.com and at MyTinyBottles on Instagram and Facebook, Tammy Coxon on Blue Sky. Please like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. Uh, have you tasted Suntory? What's your experience? Are you a royal fan? Um, definitely uh, let us know, and uh, thank you so much for joining. Cheers. Cheers.